and demonstrating sustainability. So take it away, Stephen. Okay. Firstly, I'd like to thank uh, Bleeden, who are the main sort of sponsors for a lot of the research you're about to see. I'd also like to thank the organisers um, for having a session on green mining and for everyone to actually come and listen to a talk on green mining. I know that green mining or environment is often um, viewed as secondary to things like financing, production. Um, that's mainly because a lot of green aspects I think are viewed as a cost, um, not so much as an opportunity. But in reality, our brains, human brains, are wired for opportunity. That's why you have um, investment, stock market bubbles, um, gold rushes, everything like that. Everyone looks for the opportunity. So I think uh, what we should try and do is to reframe, look for the opportunities um, here, um, and that, that way we can perhaps um, uh, try and view green mining more as an opportunity than a cost. So what do we mean by optimization uh, for waste management? Essentially what we're saying is we try and achieve a reduction in waste volumes, maximization of all volumes, reduction in the life of mine risk profile, so with respect to uh, liabilities such as asset mine drainage, demonstrating sustainability over the full life of mine, and reductions in the cost of waste management. So all these things are optimization of waste. And the key sort of themes that we're playing on here uh, for my talk is gonna be smart mining, so this is using technology, Sustainable mining, so a holistic approach, demonstrate uh, life of mine planning approaches, and efficient mining. So by efficient mining, I mean we take an approach that reflects the true life of mine costs. <laughs> so if you look at what I would say is current best practice waste management, um, pretty much now everyone is moving towards having at least block models of waste. So we are classifying waste materials, we understand what there is. Um, and increasingly we're moving towards using a mining approach to waste. So we're mining the waste as we're mining all the principles of mining are being more applied to waste zones. So there's a little video to illustrate this. Um, essentially grain control drilling is done in all zones, but now is more increasingly done in waste zones. And the reason for that is you can validate block models um, and you can get a much better idea during the mining process of what you're actually mining. From that we can optimize um, waste uh, dig plans, optimize um, uh, the extraction of, of waste essentially, and also feed into um, actual mining programs. So most, most mines track um, where things are going. So in this case what we're doing is actually um, tracking right from the beginning of the block model through to the mining, through to the placement, all the volumes and where the waste is going. This is really key if you want to optimize waste management. You have to mine the waste as the same way you, you mine the ore. But the key assumption here is that what's in the block model is actually reflected in what's mined. And I'll talk about fragmentation because this is a key aspect to this. So we look at what is ore and what is waste. Commonly, cutoff grade is used to define the difference between ore and waste. So there might be some hard cutoff. This above 1,000 ppm is always ore. There's some marginal area, which may or may not be ore depending on prevailing uh, conditions. And this material will always be waste because the grade is too low. This marginal area is often viewed as low-grade ore, but I would also say it could be viewed as high-grade waste. Okay? And this is important because if it's viewed as waste, generally speaking, it was, it's given a zero value. But if it's high-grade waste, it has a highly negative value because the cost of managing highly sulfidic material is significant. You can easily go over $10 million by the time you've looked at water treatment or cover systems. So even if it's net cotton neutral, cotton cost neutral to mine material as ore, over life of mine, it's actually probably better to do that than call it waste, if, if, unless you fully account for the cost of treating it as waste. And why that's important is when you look at fragmentation, um, what's ore, what's waste can change. So it's well known that the particle size controls geochem geochemical properties. So after blasting, sulfides, uh, metals, carbonates, they often go into the fine fraction, which means that the waste material that you're mining can have a different property to what's in the model. The same would apply to all zones, which is where there's a whole um, series of uh, 
uh, investment at the moment into increasing um, uh, efficiency of ore recovery. And the fine fraction of the waste accounts for more than 90% of the risk. So all of, most of the acid mine drainage risk comes from the fine fraction, not from the coarse material. And this is only probably 20% of the volume. Standard waste classification systems, they don't account for particle size. So what happens in most waste management programs is you're mixing small volumes of high risk material with large volumes of low risk material. And that's a missed opportunity for waste management and also missed opportunity for recovery of metals, which I'll explain. This is important because this is now coming on to the opportunity cost. So from the point of view of fragmentation analysis and technology, um, there's quite a lot of, of uh, off-the-shelf technology. So this is uh, Orica's frag track system. Um, you can link this with port portable technology like XRF. So it's, the technology is available to be able to look at the effect of fragmentation. This is mostly applied to ore, but as I explained, we should also look at applying this to waste zones. So during a blast, if we just have a look, this is a, um, a bench from a, from a gold mine. The actual block model says that this material is, is low grade, sulfide content less than 0.3%, which as a rule of thumb, mining industry and consultants tend to adopt this is low risk material, less than 0.3%, there's no environmental problem. But after a blast, this is just showing the blast face, if we zoom in on a, a piece of material that's been blasted, you'll notice there's a big cavity. Now in that cavity were sulfides. The shock of blasting removes these sulfides out of the cavities. This is because the sulfides are generally um, are weaker uh, structurally than, than the host rock. So what that means is that after blasting, all those sulfides go into the fines. So although this is 0.3% low risk, actually what happens is that virtually all those sulfides report to the fine fraction, which is the high risk fraction. So if we look at compositional variation with a blast, the fragmentation profile is important because it dictates both the particle size of the product and the degree to which concentration of metals can occur within the fine fraction. The coarser particle sizes have a smaller surface area, finer particle sizes have a bigger surface area. The reason why well, that's important is that particles, uh, the surface area influences the degree of uh, the speed of the reaction of sulfides with oxygen, which is where you get acid drainage from. So, like I said the finer fractions, they are small, they have a higher particle, a higher surface area, they are much more reactive. If we also get in concentration of sulfides into those fine fractions, it doubles the problem up. So this is some data from the site, and you can clearly see, going through the grain size fractions, sulfide content is increasing in the fine, so you've got higher surface area, higher sulfide grade. Calcium, which is a neutralizing agent, is actually staying the same. So we're not seeing the same um, uh, process between the calcium and the sulfur. So in acid mine drainage, waste characteristics, a lot of the time, it's buffering and acidity projection is used to characterize it. But in the material, that ratio can change depending on the fraction. So again, this fine fraction, which may be perceived to be low risk, could be much higher risk. Then, if we want to look at the opportunity uh, aspect of this. This data is showing um, particle size on the x-axis and on the y-axis is um, grade of uh, nickel and copper. And it's a distribution box, it's on a lot of samples. And you can clearly see that if we put a cutoff grade, arbitrarily in here at 1000 ppm, the coarser material is waste. So our block model said it's waste and it is waste. However, the fine material is actually above the cut of grade, it's actually ore. So this is waste material, contains some ore grade material. Why that's important is that you're actually concentrating in the things you want to recover in these fine materials, and they're also the same materials that are, have the high risk of um, acid mine drainage. The fine material also is basically all grade material, higher AMD risk. So this variable distribution of, of um, metals and sulfides indicates that your bulk properties of your waste don't necessarily reflect what's in your drill core samples or in your block model. So we're basically missing a potential opportunity here for recovering ore from waste and minimizing AMD risk. So if you look at the components of this, this is the block from the block model. 
after it's blasted, we get a large volume, 60% or something, of coarse material, less than 10% of the surface area, has a lower metal grade than the average block, has a lower sulphide grade than the average block, it's generally got a low environmental liability. The fine fraction, which is less than 40% of the volume, has got more than 90% of the surface area, it's got higher metal grade, and it's got a higher sulphide grade. So it's a high environmental liability cost here, but also high potential for metal recovery. If we look how most waste rock dumps are managed, we take all of this material and we throw it in a big heap. So you're mixing these high grade ore fines with low grade, low risk waste fine, uh, coarse material. And the problem with that is that acid drainage comes from reaction of oxygen and sulfides. If you mix in coarse and fines, you're encouraging oxygen there to get in. So you actually, um, uh, mixing the two materials together is the worst thing you can do. Even encapsulating this material doesn't necessarily work because although it's called encapsulation, and you're still mixing coarse and fine, you're still getting air into there. Quite typically, the solution then is to say, we'll put a cover system over the top of a waste dump at the end. Now, whilst the technology is um, uh, somewhat proven, this is mitigation, it's not prevention. So this is still quite a high risk solution to assume that at the end, you can solve all the problem that you've created by not optimizing your waste uh, placement. And again, treatment is another possible solution, but you're still treating a problem that you could have probably solved in the beginning. So the opportunities here to optimize waste management are first in identifying the waste in the ore. So this is making sure that we're looking at doing grade control drilling in the waste zones, not just the ore zones. We're looking at fragmentation analysis, and making sure that what we're calling waste is waste and what we're calling ore is ore. Recovering ore from waste, it's very feasible to recover fines. Screening technology is well established. Installing a, a, a screening plant is, doesn't incur high cost. Dry screening is actually a fairly low cost solution. And the other thing is, if you screen off the fines, you can bypass the primary and send this stuff straight to the mill. So although there is a cost of recovery, the cost of processing drops because you're not going through the crushes. And oftentimes, the primary crusher is actually a bottleneck in the expansion of mines. So you can potentially um, uh, expand your ore production without even um, having to install more crushing capacity. You can reduce the volumes of high-risk material. So like I said, these fines, they're the high-risk material. If you can get rid of them, you're actually reducing 90% of your problem by dealing with 10 to 20% of the material. This is a much more efficient way of managing this high-risk material. And you can reduce the requirement for large-scale engineering. So you don't need complicated big cover systems if you've prevented the problem in the first place. And there's also potential to manufacture rehabilitation materials. So by pulling off fine materials from low risk zones, you can actually use these in things like cover systems. If you are going to use them, you need um, finer materials. So uh, using fragmentation analysis is actually useful for that too. So from an overall process, we're looking at um, mining waste as well incorporating fragmentation analysis into the process, actually using the technology we have, which is um, grade control block models, to model waste in all zones better, and potentially in, in inserting screening processes um, to start to try and recover these fines and separate them off, leaving the coarse material uh, for waste dump, which is lower risk. And one more thing before I finish, and this is that at the exploration stage, there's also technology now to use where you can kind of predict this effect. So um, XRM is technology that's now available, and you can actually look in three dimensions inside a uh, drill core, look at the distribution of sulfides, the association of base metal sulfides with iron sulfides, association with carbonates, is it in veins, is it in fractures? What? So this technology is available, and you can actually predict to some extent what's going to happen after mining and blasting to your materials to say, is this waste potentially going to be ore, or can we recover the high risk material easily? Thank you.